Hello and welcome to Projector, and on this installment, Rooney Mara stars in the story of Mary Magdalene. Set in Judea 33 AD, Mary Magdalene, played by Rooney Mara, feels like an outsider in her family who wanted to marry and have children against her wishes. She meets Jesus, played by Joaquin Phoenix, and soon after decides to run away to join him and his apostles. And, as they make their way towards Jerusalem to spread his message, Mary forms a connection with Jesus, staying at his side as he moves towards his ultimate destiny that she will bear witness to. In recent years, we've seen something of a comeback of the religious film off of the back of the success of the God's Not Dead trilogy, and that, in turn, has led to this little mini-revival of the historical biblical epic, which is often associated with classic cinema. I think of like some Ben-Hur or The Ten Commandments, but those movies fell out of favour, but there have actually been quite a few recent examples of them. You think of the likes of Ridley Scott's Exodus, the remake of Ben-Hur, and even even Pure Flix go on in the act earlier this year with their version of Samson, but Mary Magdalene exists in what I think is a different category and maybe aims for something a bit loftier than those movies. I think you can tell just purely by who's behind it, namely Gareth Davis, who directed Lion that was nominated for several Academy Awards, and he re-teams with his co-star from that movie, Rooney Mara, and she plays the title role, and it's clearly made this movie with very good intentions and to some extent to clear Mary's name because she's often referred to as being a prostitute and the movie in its closing text actually states that that's a misconception that's a falsehood that was perpetuated to not only besmirch her but to downplay her role and legacy in Jesus's life and the film tries to retell the story of the crucifixion but tells it from a new perspective that leans more feminist and I think that's very interesting. Davis doesn't credit himself as being particularly religious and nor would I but I do think there is value in retelling these stories and telling them differently and in doing so, providing new insights. This movie has had a fairly troubled release. Universal has released it in much of the rest of the world, except for the US, because this is one of the movies that got caught up in the Weinstein scandal, and as such, is looking for a new distributor, and at the time of this video, hasn't found one yet, at least to my knowledge. And I think the reason that this movie has had so much trouble finding someone to pick it up is because it fails at what it sets out to do, unfortunately. I think the film has the clearest sense of what it's trying to be in its opening act. In its very first few scenes, we're introduced to Mary Magdalene, and she's helping another woman give birth to a child. And we see in that sequence the traits that will be so important to Mary, in the fact that she is very supportive and extremely compassionate. But we also see that this is the role that society has ascribed to women, that they are purely there to have children and then raise them, and then everything else is done by the men. And in particular, her family desperately wants her to marry and start a family herself, and Mary rebels against that. She is clearly quite independently spirited, especially for the time. Her family is led by her father, played by Chucky Cario, and she bristles up against them quite a few times in the very first few scenes of the movie, most notably when she goes out to practice her faith at a time when women are not supposed to be doing that. And as such, they actually think that she's got a demon inside of her and stage an intervention or an exorcism because they lure her down to the beach and they try to drown it out of her and very nearly kill her in the process. This actually has a mirrored image later on because when she goes with Jesus, there is a very similar scene where she is essentially cleansed, baptized, but there it's much more willing and accepting. Here, it's very forceful. And so you've got that kind of stark contrast already early on. And what's clear to Mary is that her family simply don't share her value system, that she is apart from all of them, and so everything in the first few scenes of the movie, at the beginning of it, are setting up for the inevitable 
move away from that family that Mary will enact once she meets Jesus. And what she finds in Jesus is someone that does share what she considers to be important. She finds someone that gives her strength and shows her the way. In doing so, he is supported by her in many ways. I think that the film posits that Mary is just as influential to Jesus as Jesus is to Mary, and I think that does come across, particularly in that first encounter. I do think that Mara is quite well cast in that her version of Mary is somewhat reserved in keeping with the period the film is set, but at the same time I think that's also representative of her general sensitivity and she's extremely perceptive, but at the same time there is something tenacious inside of her, that there is something that makes her want to push against the bounds of what society wants for her. And I think that in terms of the roles that Mara plays, I think it suits her very well. And I think that she brings this movie a lot more than what the film brings to her in a lot of ways. But really, I don't think that she's going to be the performance that a lot of people are going to be talking about after they see this film. I think that what people are actually going to be talking about is Joaquin Phoenix. He plays Jesus in this movie, and there is something very traditional about his depiction of Jesus in one way, especially when you look at him. You look at Phoenix in this movie, and you think that he looks exactly like the sort of classical depictions of Jesus Christ, but at the same time, what Phoenix brings to this role is something I think is very different to how he's usually portrayed in films as being this commanding presence. And in this movie, what he portrays Jesus as is something that I think is actually more human than we usually see him, because we see Jesus in this film as being someone that is extremely overwhelmed, in my opinion. There is something kind of ethereal and otherworldly about him, almost vaguely spaced out about Jesus in this movie, but in general, it seems like the responsibility that has been placed on him is something of an enormous burden. We see him enacting his miracles and he seems overwhelmed by the crowds around him that are so astonished and that they're almost rioting around him and there are points where his apostles have to drag him out of the crowd otherwise that he's going to get seriously harmed. There are moments like that in this movie. There is this sense that even though he's followed by his apostles, they don't really understand him in the same way that Mary does. And I think that this portrayal is going to divide audiences. I think it's an interesting gamble. Sometimes I don't think it entirely pays off, but it's a credit to Phoenix as an actor that he does something so bold with such a traditionally portrayed figure. And there is definitely the more common elements of Jesus' portrayal, especially in the fact that the film very much emphasises that he is a teacher. There's actually a moment where he goes into a village of women and he says, okay, what am I going to teach today? And I think that that's a very important thing to remember about Jesus, and I think that's something that's been lost. I think that there's a lot of emphasis on how Jesus died and less on his actual beliefs. And I think that that's something that this movie at least tries to get right, and I can give it a little bit of credit for that. And as the relationship grows between Mara and Phoenix on screen, it's had an unusual dimension because, of course, they're dating off-screen as well. They became an item during the shooting of this movie, which is the second film that they've made together, the first being the Spike Jones movie Her, and they're going to reappear together very shortly, and he won't get far on foot. And I think that they do have a genuine chemistry together. You can really see that in their scenes. And there is very obviously a romantic relationship building between Jesus and Mary in this film, and at least a mutual respect built up between them. And there is a certain kind of playfulness at certain moments. There's a little moment where Mara, she covers her face in a sort of joking way, and that almost feels like it's ad-libbed, and it feels very natural, and it's 
actually to the benefit of the movie, and it really doesn't overplay this element. I think it does so in a way that's quite respectful. It's definitely there, I think, but it's very much downplayed and quite subtle in a lot of ways. And I do think that the scenes between Jesus and Mary are easily the better scenes in the movie. The movie definitely posits the idea that Mary's relationship with the other apostles is a tense one, especially with regard to Peter, played by Chiwetel Ejiofor, who is most outspoken about not wanting her to be around lest they be judged for it. And a lot of it comes down to the fact that they perceive Jesus' message and interpret it in a very different way to what Mary does. They view Jesus as a revolutionary. When Jesus talks about a coming kingdom, they take that very literally. They believe that once Jesus arrives in Jerusalem, that he is going to rise up and become king. And that's what he's talking about. But Mary interprets it differently and more accurately as being a metaphor that the coming kingdom is about acts of kindness and understanding. And so you've got this tension between the group, although I have to say it doesn't really amount to a whole lot in the grand scheme of things because most of the apostles are essentially glorified extras. And even Chiwetel Ejiofor, who I think is a fantastic actor, actor really doesn't get a lot to do here, unfortunately. In fact, the only one of the apostles that really stands out is Tarahim as Judas. And again, going back to this idea that the film reinterprets figures in different ways, I think the way that they've portrayed Judas in this movie is a really fascinating one because he's essentially a fanboy. He is so completely devoted to Jesus that he ultimately brings about his own destruction just simply by trying to force events to happen. And I think that's a very novel way of interpreting this figure that's often portrayed as simply being a traitor when it's something much more complicated than that in this movie. And it's a shame because it's such a good idea, but I don't think the film, again, uses it to its fullest potential it's kind of wasted in this movie, unfortunately. If it sounds like I'm being overly praiseworthy to a movie that I think is ultimately unsuccessful, then that's mostly because I found those virtues in hindsight. It wasn't while I was watching it. In fact, while I was sitting through it, I was thinking that it was actually a lot of hard work. This is an exceptionally slow-paced movie. Some might even call it stodgy. It's the kind of movie where there are scenes of people walking through the desert and I felt like I was right there alongside them in the worst possible way. This is a dry movie and what makes it worse is that it's so utterly convinced of its own self-importance where all the actors are stating their lines in that slow, harsh tone that's borderline mumbling all the way through and really didn't hold my attention. And after a certain point, I just found frustrating and tedious. And that goes hand in hand with just the general way this film has been realized, where they were obviously trying to do a more realistic, down-to-earth interpretation of these events, to the point where I actually wondered if Jesus had his powers in this particular incarnation. And he does, but it, I only figured that out at the time they decide to adapt the Lazarus resurrection by way of a staring contest. No joke, that's how that's portrayed on screen. Jesus lies down beside the body and just stares at it for about a minute, which is not a particularly imaginative way of portraying that on screen in any way and almost is borderline comical. And what makes it worse is that there is things in this movie that do kind of work if they follow through on them in any significant way. I'm pointing specifically at a scene where Jesus goes to a village of women, their husbands are all away, and he teaches them about forgiveness. 
And in turn, one of them tells him about how all the husbands in the village did this unspeakable act to one of them and killed them. And she asks, how do you forgive something like that? And Jesus in return asks, how can you hold that kind of hatred within you? In that moment, I think the film's feminist point of view actually hits upon something interesting within Jesus' philosophy. It's a moment where it actually becomes somewhat ambiguous and it leaves you to decide what you think and how you should feel in that moment. It doesn't spoon feed you that answer. You could definitely see it from both sides and I would certainly more side with the woman than Jesus in that situation. I think that that's bold for a movie like this to do. And if the movie did more things like that through the running time, if it was more in that kind of tone, if it had more scenes like that, we really could have been on to something. I think the big problem with the movie is that it just never finds its focus. It's just a bunch of ideas that never forms any kind of rhythm. It only got a sense of momentum as it built towards the crucifixion, and that's mostly because I was going, well, here's the Last Supper, we must be near the end of the movie now. That wasn't because I was particularly engaged with the action, and I think what also is a big reason why this movie is so completely unsuccessful at what it tries to do, despite its good intentions, is that it forgets who it's trying to be about. The movie's called Mary Magdalene. That's supposed to be your main character. There's a crucial moment late in this movie where Jesus says to Mary, you are my witness. And that line means a number of different things. First, it means that Mary is the one that most understands Jesus' vision. And that is why he entrusts her to understand the coming events best but it also has a third unintentional meaning in the fact that it reinforces the idea that Mary is an observer and she remains so throughout the entirety of this movie. The whole concept of this project is to bring Mary away from the sidelines and into the central focus of the movie and they failed at doing that because so much of the film has Jesus doing his actions, and then we simply cut away to an insert shot of Mary maybe sometimes looking admiringly at him. And that simply does not work. You need to make Mary an active figure in this story, and they simply don't achieve that in any way. And as such, it does a real disservice to the story they're trying to tell, but it also does a real disservice to Mara because she's given nothing to do other than just stand around for most of the movie. And what ultimately ends up happening is that you have this story about the crucifixion that we all know about, and the only difference between most other versions is that it's told from a far worse vantage point. Because when the crucifixion happens, it's not only portrayed on screen in such a rushed fashion that I don't think you really get a sense of why it happens on screen particularly well, but also a lot of it happens off screen anyway, because Mary doesn't end up seeing it. There's a she ends up getting batted on the head and knocked out for a large chunk of it. So we barely even see the crucial act of this story. And that's purely to facilitate a sort of finale where she has to race to even see it. Like, it's so spectacularly wrong-headed and completely misses whatever they were trying to achieve with this project. And as such, it is simply a failure, unfortunately. While I was researching this review, I came across a paparazzi photo that was obviously snapped while they were filming in Italy, which doubles for a lot of locations in this film, where they were shooting the crucifixion scene and Joaquin Phoenix is strung out on the cross. Meanwhile, Rooney Mara is relaxing by having a cigarette right below him. And I thought that that one image was far more compelling, entertaining, and unintentionally hilarious than 
anything this film offered throughout the entirety of its running time. And I think that obviously a lot of people agree with me because that was retweeted a lot on Twitter. It's not a movie without virtues. In fact, it has some gorgeous cinematography that I haven't even mentioned to the point where it actually drew me out of the film even further because I was aware of just how little engaged I was in it to the point where I felt like I was watching the movie behind a plate of glass but really this is a movie where good intentions simply does not save it it fails at what it sets out to do and as such is just simply tiresome Mary Magdalene has high, noble-minded ambitions and tries to get the audience to look at its titular figure and the crucifixion story in a different light, but utterly fails to be compelling or insightful. Rooney Mara tries her hardest, but even though Mary is supposed to be the central focus, she is still a peripheral observer, especially given that Joaquin Phoenix's unusual take on Jesus takes centre stage whenever he appears, defeating the film's very premise. There are sporadically interesting concepts, particularly how it handles Tara Him's Judas, but these and the attentive feminist perspective never bond into any cohesive or illuminating thoughts about faith or religion, leaving us with a very familiar story told from an inferior vantage point that squanders so much of the talent involved, with the fact it's such a dry, tedious and empty film being the greatest sin of all. If you like this review, then you can follow my Patreon, where you can see my reviews early, among other perks. But until next time, I'm Matthew Buck, fading out. I will be out.